Okay. Honestly, okay. like when I'm looking at those, I'm looking at even though you're doing the movements, I'm also just looking at how you're moving in general, like small little nuanced things, like what are some like consistent things we're seeing over and over and over in order to like just see how the system's behaving, right? And then a lot of like the approach I take is like neuro re-education where we're just trying to, it's like all that stuff you just wish would change and like you had like the habit of doing, right? So people are like, change your posture, whatever, which is like, that's scratching the surface, honestly. Like if you can change your positioning in space when standing, that's great. But like when you start getting to like athletic levels, things like that, it can be challenging, but it's really just making sure that our assessments on point, what's the body telling us? And then nine times out of 10, we just do the opposite of what it's doing and it it learns it and picks it up, self-organizes, so. Okay, that's great. Um, all right, so you're having some issues with the pelvis and the hips. Um, right side is always tight. The <laughs> calf adductors, hamstrings, all this stuff, man. That sounds terrible. Yeah, that's uh, the worst ever. <laughs> right. Um, let's see, posture's bad, needs a little bit of work. Planes of soccer. Okay. So the knee injury, what, what happened? Was it just, oh, you said you stretched the tendon or ligament, but no surgery, right? I didn't have any surgery. It was like, a, so I was running towards the ball. A defender was coming at me from the side okay. and I jumped forward to reach for the ball. So my leg was like in a hyper extended, yeah, movement. And then like I landed in that movement. And so, like, I felt, like, pressure on the back side of my knee on the right side. It just, I didn't hear a pop or anything. It was just, like, almost like if, uh, like, the outsides of the, the tendon or the strings of the tendon, I don't know the correct term, would just, it just felt like they were, like, unwinding a little bit, like, just, like, little, little, pops like not not like a huge pop or anything it just yeah. felt stretched in pressure and then I, I came back too soon and my leg gave way the second time around um so I was like going for a shot in a drill and I kicked with the injured leg landed on the same injured leg and it's just like my leg gave out mm. like when I landed on it and if no real huge amounts of swelling or anything like that, no bruising or anything, it's just like the back side of my knee would always swell up if I would try to do any activity or anything for like a week and then it would go away. And then um, I would like sometimes I would just keep re-injuring it, re-injuring it, doing the same thing, but it would go away after like a week. And then I would try it again and it would, it's just like, it would keep showing up. And over time, I, I think I was just overcompensating and, and stuff like that. And I just created some really bad habits. I don't, that's kind of, you know, really what I can tell you. I mean, yeah. I have a really vivid memory of everything that happened, but I know we only have so much time. Yeah, for sure. No. Um, okay. So it's like a hyperextension injury that you suffered. And this was like a couple of years ago. Last yeah, year. This, months. this was um, three years ago. So I've been trying to battle, like figure out what I can do to fix this thing. Cause I know it's like, I can do all the movements, but jumping on the, on that leg like in a vertical motion like just one leg I can do it but it's it's not as powerful as my my opposite side gotcha okay where are you located at uh right now I'm in New York New York okay I was in Florida um for the last four years but now I'm in New York gotcha okay man. um like New York City uh the capital albany gotcha okay so i was thinking just in case oops. i don't know well like i said um 
this is all about you, man. Like whatever we can get so that way you can get back to what you want to do. So whether that's, you know, you work with me after this, you find some sort of avenue through the internet and you're just like constantly like study that topic or I can even refer you to other people that I know um, for like some in-person support. Because I think, I mean, you've been having it for three years. I don't know. Let's see what the, let's see what the assessment tells us. How about that? Yeah. But I mean, it's gotten so much better, like through just me trial and error with things, yeah. but it, like I just got done tra like training the last two weeks while I was here mm -hmm. and the last day I mean I trained like I felt good but like it's just always really really tight and it and I'm like always trying to recover versus like getting better like yeah. at what I'm doing yeah I hear you yeah I, I I understand that it's a battle and it's annoying it's very annoying <laughs> yes <laughs> um okay man yeah so let's just kind of dive into this um i think maybe you know you could have some especially if it's a three-year issue right like you said you have some learned habits to sort of compensate with this injury for so long um there may be some tissue like increased tissue flexibility in the knee at this point, which may alter how that knee moves. Um, typically, when we're dealing with anything knee like hyperextension, if this is my knee, it's due to a lack of extension abilities up at the hip. If this was my hip, okay. So, like for instance, I get, I do an overhead press with my arm. I can't get full shoulder flexion, so I lock out my elbow and it hyperextends. Mm. Right. Same thing happens with the knee where it will hyperextend whether with whatever you're doing. And now that you may say like have a little bit more length in the knee and the tissues are surrounding it for whatever, you know, whether it is from injury or whatever it is, um, it could just be that's how it's behaving. But, you know, you even kind of talked about tight hips in your intake form. So that could be something that's definitely hindering you and making you really overutilize that knee to a greater degree. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Cause that, that hip like on that side is like extremely tight, like for sure. Just can't get rid of it. Um, what, yeah. Well, we'll see what we can get, man. Let's see what's going on here. Um, in terms of like, what I'm seeing just from your standing positioning, and again, like posture just tells us how the system is behaving, right? To gravity, it's very macro. It's like big picture approach. We can pick out a lot of things, but we need to, with what we pick out and the hypothesis we kind of build, we want to then like get smaller, more micro, like what's this joint doing? What's this joint doing? Like, and then start to approach it with that get those moving and then see if that changes the bigger picture, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then we're also like working through, <clears throat> excuse me, like neuro re-education. So it's not only just like strengthening, stretching, it's like, we gotta teach all the stuff how to move. Like you get that motion, we gotta get it back. Um, right. So what I'm seeing right off the bat, left shoulder is a little bit higher than the right. And then we also have a left hip a little bit higher than the right. Okay. This right off the bat is telling me that, and you know, take this all with a grain of salt. You know, I'm just a guy online, you know, <laughs> and this is you like in a snapshot of movement, like how you move throughout the day could be different. Okay. But this is just what we're seeing right here, right now. Um, but that left hip, that left shoulder being higher tells me that this side is, it's like a net upward movement like decompressed, whereas the right side is like a net downward movement. You're trying to force your right side down. You can even see how you turn your foot out, mm -hmm. right? When you do that, um, we're going to, it's like you're trying to force your right leg like into the ground, okay? To create force to go forward or up, okay? Your right leg is essentially, especially when that foot turns out, it's 
asking for an internal rotation that it's not getting from the hip. So the hip can't internally rotate. And with that regard, it can't extend like we previously mentioned. So it starts to compensate at the knee and it starts to compensate at the foot and that foot will kind of pancake down and spin out for, like I said, just a lack of the internal rotation happening at the hip. You also see this pelvis will sort of like come up and over the right side. And when that happens, you're getting like, I personally have like battled this in the past. Um, and even to some degree, like it's, it's, it's a pretty normal occurrence. What we're seeing um, with athletes, you know, people who work out a lot, all this type of stuff. And it's just kind of how the system wants to behave, right? Like the, the brain has a series of patterns it wants to utilize. And then you get into these like higher level, like, you know, powerful movements, sprints, whatever, jumps, hips, like your body's going to organize in the best way that's efficient in terms of calories, right? And it would, the body nine times out of 10, it'll let you live in pain as long as you survive, then <laughs> get rid of cat, like waste calories or feel unsafe or do something completely novel, right? So you're just kind of living in this positioning that could, like the goal would literally just be to switch these arrows, get the left side to like compress down and decompress, get you off the right side. And what that's going to do is allow this to like internally rotate a little bit more, okay? Mm. So this is higher, this is higher. This left pelvis is trying to go over the right femur. When that happens, it tightens up everything. A lot of people will talk about like SI pain or like hip impingement at the front. And then, yeah. you know, it just kind of shows up differently for like symptoms wise for different people. Okay. So right off the bat, we're seeing some big things. Let's see from this uh, angle. Okay. One of the reasons why this also occurs. So you're playing soccer, you're on the pitch, you're like always on your toes, right? You're always mm -hmm. running, you're taking advantage of gravity. So the body starts to do things where it's like, we're doing this all the time. We're just gonna live here versus like trying to own all this other range of motion, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it's always trying to cut back calories. So we can see your body, this is like the imaginary line, like the goal line we'll say, but in terms of, no one ever necessarily gets here. It's more like just get going back that direction, right? Like let's get off your toes. But we can see like, I mean, part of your back's not even touching the line, hamstrings aren't touching the line. If you're in this position here, we can see like going through the center of your body as well as like the center or like the temporalis of the head, like all your body weight is going through that toe, like ball of the foot, okay? So you're just living here. And when you get forward like this, you start to see the pelvis start to compensate and it starts to do some funky things because, I mean, it's like you're on your toes, right? Like your balance is off a little. Right. That makes sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it'd be like trying to squat, you know, on your toes with 315 pounds. Like you're going to do some funky stuff. Yeah. Right? <laughs> So we're seeing these kind of lines, left shoulders up, left hip is up. You're trying to go, you're going to the right with this like rotation that's happening. And then you're also on your toes, which may be another reason why that sort of sagittal plane like strategy is being utilized, okay? Mm -hmm. For the back, yeah, man, even more pronounced. Now this is all cool, right? Like we can see like, hey, this is happening, right? Like the left hip is higher than the right, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Do you see this? Yeah, and that's what I've always kind of been struggling. I've been like trying to figure out like all the information that the cesspool of information that's on the internet and yeah. then like look at what's going on with me and I could never like buy into what was actually. So it's really nice to hear you tell me 
which hip is higher than the other. Yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely tough, man. Like like you said, it's a there's so much information out there. It's <laughs> that's why I do what I do. Like when I was dealing with my issues, like back in 2015, like no one was no one was doing this, you know? Like no one was online, no one was there to like talk to. It's just like a bunch of Reddit comments and it was not helpful. So <laughs> um but yeah like i said as long as i can point you in the right direction like or whatever like that's the whole goal of this but hopefully you'd see i think you have to draw a line here wow hold on let's make sure that's right in the middle yeah man always take this with a grain of salt you know like things can be a little different but you definitely like think of this and you can even see how your foot shape, it's kind of like pushing down the floor on the left. So it's like you're trying to send yourself this way. Does that make sense? And that yeah. causes this right shoulder and right hip to collapse down. So the left side is, is basically trying to go over the right side. Exactly. Exactly. Your your pelvis is going over and forward that right femur. Okay. Wow. And that's why I feel that impingement in the front. Impingement, you'll have all kinds of weird tightness on that side. You can't get off of your right leg. Yes, exactly. Like why that calf and like everything up the chain is super tight. Right. Yeah. So the goal would be like get your right glute max kicking in so that way you can push out of the right and get over onto the left and then you start to decompress it a little bit because right now it's just like breaking all the time it's just like getting smashed from the ground every time you take a step or run or whatever it is um and it doesn't have the ability to like use that force to load and then explode out mm. making sense yeah um what we would expect from a straight leg raise and like a knee to chest test would be that you would probably have more range of motion on the left than you would the right okay so that's like again looking at macro and going toward micro like what's what are the hips doing what's happening here the shoulder you know what's your rotation we would expect that you would have more rotation probably toward the left i don't know we'll see what happens i'm gonna skip this one let's see your rotation Okay, you get a bunch to the left for sure. Let's see toward the right. Okay, a little bit limited in comparison. So you see how you see like more of your back on the left mm -hmm. or like going toward the left? Yeah. So you're able to like get over there because you're already over toward the right. That makes sense. You can't go to a place if you're already there. Right, right. And even like how the hips are moving. Like there's not a ton of dissociation between the rib cage and the pelvis. Right. It's kind of like you're this whole unit that has to turn together versus like getting some extra like rotation. Like it doesn't dissociate very well. And you have to shove this hip out to the side to turn to the right. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're really good at, if you were a Rubik's Cube, you're really good at changing, like just flipping over the faces. But we're having trouble at this point, like rotating the individual pieces of the Rubik's Cube. That makes sense? Yeah. And that's normal. Like, and none of this stuff is like, oh, you're going to spontaneously combust and like, uh, <laughs> it's nothing. It, your body's just saving calories. It's easier to just, tighten everything up and shove a body part in a specific direction versus having to like contract and relax and contract and relax and do all this like fine-tuned stuff especially in a situation where there's a lot of power if you're also doing all this like contract relax stuff all the time you're probably not going to be as fast <laughs> you're not going to be as powerful right like you need that stiffness to be quick to produce the force 
But the thing is, like, I need you to leave that in the training room. I need you to leave that on the pitch. I need you to be able to use that and just leave it there. So that way, when you walk off, you go home, you go sit on your couch, you're not like still stiff as a board trying to like utilize that strategy. That makes sense. Yes. See right in your chest. I'm that's amazing information. I've never I've never come across that. Like that's what the body's doing, saving energy and just like forcing one area to Yeah. That's why like we'll have tight hips. It's because I mean your glutes and quads and hands, those are some of the biggest muscles on your body. They are the biggest mm-hmm. muscles on your body. So it the body's just like, okay, that's fine. Lock them down. And then that's that stiffness that'll boom, like you're sprinting, you're doing all this stuff. And again, like, it's not that I want to take that away from you. That's what makes you a good athlete at the end of the day. It's just having that ability to go from on to off. Right, right. And the brain's always going to, it's just going to do what you're doing all the time. If you're playing professionally, you're doing this all the time that's all that's what it comes down to like you can have a lateral pelvic tilt like left hip left shoulder up higher it doesn't even matter people have that all the time with pain it's just the are they able to turn off are they able to start with the recovery process right mm-hmm. that's what that's what it comes down to um, okay so from here what we're seeing with the toe touch you just see how and it, this could also be lighting too, um, but it looks like this right side is just a lot more open in comparison to the left. Like this left low back region is like really closed down. So this is gonna be the source of where a lot of your, that like left hip coming over the right femur, okay? It's like your left spinal erector, your left QL is shoving your pelvis forward mm. and like, so it's all hitting glute meat on the left side and what is trying to like send you over towards the right. Okay. Okay. So the goal is just flip this, like flip the script. I need to compress the right side, right glute max is a really good muscle to go after. And then get this all to expand outward, right? So that way it's typically not the side that's bigger that's the issue. It's this side that's staying closed down. So if we can open that side up, then you have this ability to like contract, relax, expand, compress. You know, you get you get your movement options back. Mm. Okay. Let's see. Man, you need some hamstring work too. <laughs> yeah, bad. <laughs> yeah, man. And that's like a huge, huge, huge thing that I would recommend. Like, especially like think of um look at a photo of the hamstring let's see let's see if you get this good photo um this one let's see then there we go can you see this okay yes okay so here's all your hamstring muscles you got the three muscles, semimembranosis, I can never say it, semitendinosis and bicep femoris. Especially look at the membranosis and the um, bicep femoris, how they run on the outside of the knee, all this connective tissue here. Uh-huh. And when they run into there, let's see, maybe there's a better photo. They act as almost like, have you ever ridden a horse? I have before. Okay, so they got the reins. And how you pull to the right, goes to the right, Uh, goes to the left. The The hamstring muscles literally act for like rotation, all this kind of stuff. And allow, like here you see like the hamstring tendons. It's gonna, the hamstrings are the ones that are gonna dictate and protect the knee. If you're having issues with hyperextension, hamstrings are gonna be what's controlling it. Because right now your quad is taking over, your glute is taking over. And we need to get that hamstring to be able to like, you know, take the reins, hold it in place in a better position. Makes sense. And as well as calf, calf and uh, soleus are going to be super important as well in trying to prevent all of that from like that hyperextension from just like randomly occurring. 
Oh, uh, okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. The after like the first two days I was training while I was here in New York, the I could feel the right side soleus was just like lit up on fire. Yeah. And and once it like healed and recovered, like that whole area felt better, but like I guess just because I, I don't understand maybe why, just because it uh, helped strengthen a little bit in that area or whatever, but that that area was super sore, like after my first day, first yeah. two days of training. It's just working hard, man. It's trying really hard. Let's see. Yeah. All right. So now we're seeing sort of the inverse here. You see how your right hip is a little higher than the left? Mm -hmm. in terms of like your cheeks right yes the, you're sort of sinking in over toward the left this could be you just trying to get away from that like hip impingement sort of sensation too um but i like you have good mobility man but it's just how you get there right like it's potentially we could say it's like not as clean as we would want it to be right like for you to get down here you have to shift that left hip higher you have to like zigzag and then settle down into the bottom position does that make sense yes let's see oh we don't get one from the back that's okay so we'll just watch it from the front Yeah, you like start from the left. So your hips like shooting out to the left right now and you're going over your right. You're trying to find that end rotate. Like everything you're doing is you just like trying to turn over that right side. Is that making sense now? Yeah. This, this is where I was talking about like, let's just see how you move and then see these like little habits that you have. Right, like what's consistent in your movement patterns, and like that's a big one, probably the biggest one. Okay, yes. um, yeah, man. I'm kind of getting toward the end of the call, but I think that was really all I wanted to see in terms of like what's going on. I think we have a pretty good idea. Let's just see your hip internal and external range of motion. I feel really limited on that too. Yeah. And you can see how you're like, re it's not smooth. You're like, mm -mm. like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're trying to like just cheat it. You're like, ah, just, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> body's not happy with that one. No. Let's see the left. So you're left. You have more on the right than you do the left. Okay. And, you know, we kind of talked about how the right side is limited in its internal range. Like, it's looking for that internal range of motion. So you technically have it for at the current moment, but the way you're getting it isn't from, again, like, it's not from the Rubik's Cube being able to, like, turn and rotate. It's because you're taking that entire Rubik's Cube and you're facing it, like, in a certain direction. So this left hip is coming up and over which is a relative hip internal rotation. I can't turn my hip in, but if I take my pelvis and I wrap it over top of it, it's, uh, it's the same motion. Right. right? But yeah. now you're using a really large structure to do something that the femur should be able to do on its own pretty easily. Making sense? Yeah. You're on. <clears throat> so, I'd say both could use a little work for sure, but you have more technically on the right, but it's at this point, like it's stolen, right? <laughs> You're stealing yeah. it from the rest of the body. <laughs> cool. There's a much more efficient way to do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, you know, at least get you out of pain and get you out of like tightness and control the knee. Like this mm -hmm. stuff doesn't have to be perfect, but if you can just, 
you know, move the needle a little bit in this direction versus you always like, you're someone like, if you were a car, you literally have no acceleration. You just go zero to a hundred, right? Like, I just need yeah. to teach you, okay, man, this is a school zone. Like, just relax a little <laughs> and then let it go uh, at the right yeah. time. Let's teach you some like acceleration. Um, and that like goes a long, long way. Oh, that would go a long way with playing soccer. I mean, instead of just being only being able that one speed. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And again, you have this, it's just kind of feeding these different fires, filling up different buckets. You're always just filling up the same bucket right now. Let's just fill up a couple other ones, get some weight in them, and then let the body self-organize. Like I'm a big proponent of like your body's smarter than me, anyone else out there you know, who's doing this stuff. It knows what it needs to be. Like er, the way it's behaving right now is for a good reason. We just need to remind it, try to remind it, you know, put some little breadcrumbs out there and see if it'll take it up and then let it self-organize and be like, oh yeah, I forgot about this. Like we can do this instead of always what we're doing at this point. Okay. Yeah. Questions. Um. And that was a lot of information. That was good stuff. I, I, I'm i like relieved, like, and very thankful because like I've, I've been battling in my mind, like what is like, what is the root cause? And mm-hmm. um, I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, man. I mean, I would, I would love to be able to, you know, work with you and, and take care of this issue, you know, like, like you said, get going in the right direction. Um, I don't know how how we could do that as far as if it would be an online thing or uh, if you yeah. have like a... I, I typically or at the moment I'm just online um, I'm located in Cincinnati and I'm working on getting some like inverse and stuff but I've been doing this for a hot minute and it's a lot of fun and you can get a lot of stuff done and it, it makes it easier and someone like yourself who's you know you're already training you know how to move this stuff will go pretty quick um, versus like someone who's just fresh off the street they haven't moved they know like what the hell's going on um so yeah man like i'll just show you really quick and i'll send you an email with all this but i have two different types of packages just to kind of like look at this where to go so I'll send you a link to services Um, I have like the one hour, just like hop on a call, kind of like what we're doing right now, but we're just going over everything. I already have your assessment. There's like maybe a couple of tests I'd want to see just to confirm everything. Um, so there's always like just the one hour, the one to three exercises. I have the, this one, which is more like posture, injury prevention, whatever. It's the one where you're in pain, something's wrong, you need help with it. We're not really thinking about training um at this point though i do give you maybe like a couple of strengthening exercises here and there um, but really everything we're doing i'm only giving you like one to three exercises to do on a daily basis so you do it once a day um and those movements are just we're trying to add every, everything into it whether it's stretching strengthening um, neuromuscular control like literally everything into one movement <laughs> Yeah. build you from the ground up so that way it's it takes you 20 30 minutes you're done you're out you're doing your thing um and then last one here just the monthly online training so this is where i mean you get everything nutrition um you get the injury prevention you know get you out of pain um and then i'm also writing your workouts for like the month so it's really up to you whichever one works uh, I do some like email support with this one. This one I put you in an app so that way we can talk. Everything's through an online app that I use called Trainerize. So you just download it and then you have your program in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we're meeting with these two because they're monthly. We're meeting once a once a week and progressing and you know trying to make it as close to in person as we can, like essentially can. So. Right. Right. But you can just schedule the same way. You just hit schedule and it brings you the same software and you can pay and all that stuff with this. 
Okay, cool. So I can just do this on your, your website there. Yes, sir. Um, I am getting, I am really booked up right now. Um, so if you do sign up, it might happen until like next week, potentially. I don't know. We, you can also email me. It'll have like all the available times, but uh, do you have any questions about these? Um, yeah, I, like I really want to invest in, you know, into being able to do this for a long time, like as far as like play. Right. And I know this is <clears throat> definitely something that you have to, that I need to do. I definitely need to do this. Like to get me in to the direction that I need to be in, like, do you have like, like a rough estimate, like how long it may take me to get my, my mobility and my hips and stuff like that and get everything kind of going where they need to be? Yeah. Um, so typically I, so here I say like typical programs, I, I don't lock you in any contracts, but I need to put this in there. Like we're looking at a month to three months that we're starting, let's say like a quarter. Um, <clears throat> for someone like yourself, you're having like a lateral hip height kind of deal. It can take a minute, probably the full month, but in terms of control pain, like I'm talking two weeks. If you're not out of pain in two weeks, like we're, we're talking, we're diving in deep and really like getting you out of there. Um, but typically I see, have people seeing changes in pain and mobility, like in the first month. I said two weeks. And then after that, it's really just the consistency of doing stuff. So that's where it's like, by the end of three months, like you're looking back, like I can't believe that was me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, and that's why I don't put people on contracts because I'm like, all right, let's get you there. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, yeah, the one of the reasons why I ask, I mean, I'm not, I'm not impatient in the sense that like I gotta have this like right away. It's just like I'm in New York training with like a group of professionals and stuff, and like I, you know, I I I had this feeling I was gonna just my body was gonna start kind of doing what it needs to do but I, I'm not it, it is I, I'm getting better I'm able to like recover like there's no problem it's just like instead of like me spending so much time trying to recover I feel like I want to be like working on my speed I want to be working on my, you know in the gym and stuff like yeah. that definitely and, and too like just the confidence of knowing your knees gonna hold up like that's huge yeah that's probably you know half of it 80 percent of it right there like knowing that you can trust your body to be like i'm gonna make this cut you know i'm gonna do this yeah part. it's not gonna yeah. walk out on me and like have that issue right like yeah so that's where i was saying man like hamstrings 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 for days yeah so it's like it's both hamstrings that need the work like it's to get that shift in yeah if anyone my athletes, whenever I'm working with them, like I'm giving them, I'm feeding them hamstrings all day, every day, as much as I possibly can, just because, especially if they're dealing with any knee issues, just because of the way, like how we were talking about how the muscle innervates, like it literally controls the knee. And if you can get that muscle stronger, like you're, anyone who's post ACL, post like any sort of knee injury, I don't even I don't even care about the quad. Like the quad is easy to get back, no problem. It's those hamstrings that are really going to be the money makers right there. So, and that's just in my experience and also the research that's finally catching up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, man. Awesome. Yeah, I, I really appreciate it, and um, I, I'll definitely uh, go on your website. And I mean, like whenever I sign up, do I just like shoot you an email or I'm sure you get everything. Um, yeah. Um, I'll put it all in the email. Just, it'll have all the links um, to go to. And then when you schedule, it'll be just like how you did with this. Okay. So schedule, you get a zoom. It, it, it'll all be set up there. I, find, I got it all like set up to be that way. So 
schedule. You can pay through the software and then you'll have your date. We'll meet. Um, I'll start getting you thrown into the app. And yeah, we'll get started. Cool, cool. So that that monthly plan, that's the one that will give me exercises every day to do and exactly. injury prevent. It just gives you the whole thing. Pretty much. Exactly. Okay. And then if you're looking to be like doing this while in the gym, you know, and looking for movements that aren't going to piss your knee off or like hit your hip, something like that. That's what the, the works, the more expensive package. That's one. Um, if you're looking for that kind of stuff as well. But if you just want to get rid of this new stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I just want to be able to, I just want to have the mobility, the mobility that I need, like, and, and not feel like I'm limited on one side like that. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, I mean, the middle tier, I would definitely do one of the monthly programs. So it's just whichever one you want to do. If you want some exercise, full on plan, like, I'm happy to do it. Like, that's, that's what's fun about it. Like, and that's the direction I'm always gearing people towards anyways. It's like, yeah, hey, you feel good. Guess what? We're going to get you strong. We're going to get you jacked. Like, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go this direction. And then just do it with, because the assessment still tells us not only like what to do from an injury perspective, right? But it also tells us here are the easiest, like the lowest hanging fruit for exercise we can do. So for you, like, front foot elevated split squats. Um, I'm probably not gonna give you back squats right now just because you're gonna shift, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you some unilateral work, let you go crazy on a lead press, you know, things that are gonna kind of constrain you a little bit. Um, it, it just tells us the direction and what exercises you're gonna be able to move well with. And then what are also gonna give you the best yield in terms of athleticism, you know, aesthetics, all that stuff. So that the assessment tells us all. It's not even me. It's literally your body <laughs> telling me what, what it needs and what it wants. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Kyle. I appreciate it. Dude, no problem, man. Um, I'll send you that email today. And yeah, I look forward to getting started. All right. Sounds good. Same here. All right, man. You take care. All right. Take care.